France and Scotland served up yet another all-action affair. My name's Mark, let's talk rugby. Scotland started this one really well, they're throwing the ball around, they managed to work it into the 22, force themselves a penalty, Russell kicks that to the corner, they then set up a mall, they get another penalty advantage, decide to go inside to the backs, a little bit hesitant around about the middle of the field, we have a bit of a scrappy bouncing pass out to Kinghorn, he picks that up and then puts a lovely pass over the top out to Stain on the wing and he goes over in the corner, Russell then adds the extras and it's 7-0 Scotland early doors. Just after that then, Marchand gets over the ball for France, wins them a penalty, Ramos makes a 7-3. Not too long later then, Russell slots a penalty for Scotland to make it 10-3. From here then, it's back and forth, both teams looking to run the ball and to go you know, quickly from any kind of turnover that's happening. We have a magic moment from Pernod he's basically just running across field not really going anywhere but just the fact that he's just fending off attempt to tackle after attempt attempt to tackle eventually you know he goes to ground the ball goes forward but it was just great to watch that little cameo there France then they're uh, applying pressure on the Scotland line they get themselves penalty advantage Aldrich goes close but can't really get over they then decide to kick into the corner as they um, try then to give it off the top Bourdon drops the ball and it's a scrum to Scotland France though win penalty at the scrum uh, Schumann went to ground it looked like you know Scotland just needs to get the ball in and out uh, and then kick it clear but they couldn't do that France then go back to the corner they win another penalty as they were moving the ball uh, in field because one of the Scotland players wasn't supporting his weight the breakdown. Scotland then are given a warning. Ramos pops the penalty over for 10 6. You know, it could have been a, um, a chance for them to go to the corner with, you know, possibility of a Scotland yellow card after that warning, but they, they decided to take the points instead. France then, they go quickly from a turnover. We have some lovely interplay with Villiers and Flamand. That puts uh, Dupont away, and but you know he goes over to ground, but it's already been called back at that stage. Touch judge's flag was up for a foot and touch from Dupont earlier on in the in the move, but then we see on replays that it looks like Dupont's foot wasn't actually in in touch. I think it was, it was Stain who you know did that one where you grab the player's foot and press it on the line, but didn't quite press it on the line. So. I'm not sure whether it would have been a score or not because most people stopped anyway before um, Dupont got away, but still um, probably shouldn't shouldn't have been given as out. From there then, Ali Price um, gets himself a yellow card for not retreating. France, after that, are looking dangerous with the extra man. They win a penalty in the 22 for not rolling away. They decide to go for the scrum. We then have a lovely first phase move off the back of that. Dupont with a hard running line. Fiku comes on a great dummy line. Entomac kind of goes looping around him. And Dupont passes it off. He goes over to score with the Scotland defence stretched. And like... It wasn't just a case of, you know, uh, Scotland missing him. It was, there were other runners outside as well that had to be covered and it just created enough space for him to go over. From here then, um, Ramos converts as 13-10. France hit the lead for the first time in the game. Scotland then, they're um, under pressure as France are looking to run the ball again, but Scotland managed to uh, force a knock-on and then they win a penalty at the resulting scrum. Scotland, they hold on to the ball then for about 12 or 13 phases, but Dante gets over the ball um, and wins a penalty for France. Both teams at this stage are really stretching the line with the ball in hand and also being very aggressive in defence as well. It's, you know, com tempo compared to the England's and Wales game you just can't compare it to the two teams like 
in a way it looked like a training ses session compared to this this was a full-blooded um, test match from here then um, Scotland concede a penalty uh, for collapsing a mall just in the stroke of half time France um, go up the line from this but then they overthrow Scotland get it off and I think Scotland actually Russell kicked it down the field and actually France kick it off the field but it's 13-10 at half time you know uh, both teams doing pretty well in the first half but I felt I noticed that Kinghorn was he was coming to the line looking for work but there was a few occasions when he, when he was actually taking space away from his own centers by doing that. Maybe he needed, you know, a couple of times when he needed to maybe hold it a little bit of width to, you know, make, make the defenders think instead of, you know, running it into the space and making it easy for the defender to actually cover both of them. Uh, but I felt he actually improved a lot in the second half into the second half then um france strike right at the start of the half we have a little bit of magic from dupont gets him a bit of go forward then pano with a nice uh fend and he gets over to score in the corner ramos converts from the touchline and it's 2010 to france it's just you know absolutely amazing rugby from the two teams then France, you know, keep the foot on the accelerator pretty much, you know, straight after that. They, um, Scotland kick down the field. They kick, take a quick throw. Dupont um, just runs it back and then, you know, a superb skip pass out to the, out to the wing. Um, and Ramos is out there. He goes away down the wing. Then, um, he has Olivon on his inside. He gives it to him, and Olivon then goes goes in under the post on a pose. You know, typical France, like just very quick in terms of um, the speed of thought and putting those thoughts into into action as well. And then everybody knowing what's happening and getting there to support. That's one of the reasons why you know a lot of times when they do things like they score is because the guy who you know has the is quick thinking uh, knows that he's got support of the rest of the team as well Every, everybody's on board with it whereas other teams somebody will go quickly and you know they're gonna run up a blind alley simply because other people don't gamble and go with them but france are just so good at that ramos adds the extra and we're at 27 10 and you know they just absolutely slice scotland open there from here then we got lots happening in the game we even have uh dupont kicked an up and under and by the time the ball actually came back down it was flat like i don't know what the hell happened it but we have to, to switch to a different ball then uh we then have the team over team overview after france do um really well to keep the ball alive in the midfield ramos kicks the ball in behind uh in behind the scotland defense and we have a bit of a scramble for the ball. Entomacto knocks on before Ramos is able to ground. So it's a scrum five to Scotland. From there then, um, Van der Merwe and Russell, um, you know, in the middle of the park, they're trying to spark some, something for, for Scotland and get them a little bit of go forward. France then... Um, you know, they turn the ball over, they launch it high, and Van der Merwe claims it out near, um, you know, in kind of tram lines. He then tries to shrunk off a tackle from Dupont, but Dupont is just like he's a terrier and he's so strong, manages to force him into touch. Not quite the same level as the try saver against Mac Hansen, but still was a hell of a tackle and showed really great strength from Dupont against, you know, a player of um, Van der Merwe's size and strength as well from here then um van der Merwe, he is coming more into the game he manages to um brush off aldrit and surges into the 22 but then uh villiers is able to get over the ball and win a penalty for france but it feels like you know if scotland could um score you know in the next few minutes or so that the comeback is on we've seen them do it so many times in the past 
then uh, yeah it just felt like you know something was stirring with Scotland the way they were coming back into the game and when you look at it like these um, are two of probably the best three sides in the world of being able to score a lot of points in a very condensed amount of time we saw France scoring two tries in like you know a couple of minutes and Scotland I'd say are one of the other teams that are consistently able to do that and say the third team is probably New Zealand when they're really on it uh, and other teams can do it at times but I think these are the teams that are more most consistent at it and I think that's why Scotland have that ability ability to come back they're beginning then to, to apply a lot of pressure in the game Jones goes through a gap into the 22 he then uh it looks like he's actually going to get there and score, but Perno gets him down uh, just short. Then he gets back up and starts to compete. Scotland, I thought, did really well to protect the ball and stop the, the turnover, the penalty. Uh, then it uh, goes out wide to Van der Merwe. He goes over the corner. We have a bit of a TMO, TMO review. The we'll try is given. Russell misses the touchline conversion. We're at 27 15. Russell then um throws like you know round about halfway throws a wide pass that tempts Villiers to come up and try for the intercept but it goes over his head Scotland have two men outside him they break down the wing then it comes back inside to Russell it, uh, they get into the 22 then Scotland win a penalty at the breakdown Russell goes quickly from that um France can't tackle him because you know they're not back the, the 10 meters so he exploits that gives the ball off the dart and he goes over to score Russell tags on the extras and it's 27 22 it really is game on now Villiers then uh, makes a break for France but we have a great tackle from Ollie Smith dislodges the ball just short of the line it really is like back and forth between the two of them then Scotland come forward again Russell with a fantastic op offload I think it was to Sebastian um, then from there they go out to the right wing Horn puts in a grubber um, through and then Stain has the pace great hands as well to pluck it out of the air he gets over to score in the corner Russell misses the touchline conversion from that one and we're all tied up to 27 all Scotland then throw their first dodgy line out of the game and France are able to nick it they look to attack from just outside the Scotland 22 but Scotland force a knock on both teams really going for the win here France then win a penalty at the resulting scrum Ramos calls for the tee he pops that over and makes it 27 or sorry 30 27 with just a minute left on the clock Scotland then win a penalty for a an off the ball tackle by F Fiku I think it was on Sutherland um and I've got one last chance to launch an attack. Russell kicks the penalty up the line to just outside the 22. France, though, get up really well and the line out. Ball is thrown to the back. They disrupt. As Scotland then come down to try and set up the mall, they knock the ball on and that's it. Final score is 30-27. What a, an amazing game of rugby that was. In terms of the two teams, Scotland... They, they lost this one, but again, they showed that grit and fight to be able to come back in games. That's going to be such an asset for them in the Rugby World Cup. Russell, I thought, was excellent. Stain and Van der Merwe were very busy on the wings. Kinghorn looked a lot better in the second half. Back row went well, um, you know, on both sides of the ball. And, you know, I thought Jones and Tupelotu looked uh, better than last week. Line out went well, other than like those last two line outs uh, in the game. But you know, I could mention the entire team, I thought they all played, played really well. Same for France, but you know, France they got the win and you know, they showed that ability to go again after Scotland came back and got level. I thought Villiers and Pinot were excellent. And with Dumortier, they have you know an embarrassment of riches. They got Biel and Barry who come on as well. Um, yeah, and just so much talent for them to pick on the wings. Woki and Fulamon um, went well together in the second row, as did Dante and Fuku in the centres. Like, there's not enough words to describe how special Dupont is, and then Entmac 
alongside him as well. All three to all of on very busy, you know, as I said, I could have mentioned the entire team. I think one thing that France should worry about though is, you know, two different sides that they picked, both built up side sizable leads, but couldn't stretch away um, and, you know, make it so that Scotland couldn't come back. So that's that is a little bit worry of a worry for them. In this one, they were you know, they're able to to come get that score in the end to get the win. But you know, if it goes the other way in a quarter final or a semi final, that's gonna be their rugby world cup over. So that's you know something for them just just not switching off maybe when they they built up a lead is something to, uh for them to work on. Again, uh, I hope you know any injured players recover from the Rugby World Cup. I know Dante and Intermac um, hobbled off for France. Uh, probably one or two more on both sides. So hopefully everyone you know is able to come back by then. And last thought on the game is that if the D- DVD specials were still a thing, I'd be absolutely over the moon to receive a Best of France versus Scotland stocking filler for Christmas this year.